Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Norm Fazekas, Chris Allen, Chris Smith, and Gabriel Hermosillo. On this episode of DTNS, why the solar eclipse reveals solar power's prominence, tech has spurred comedy's renaissance, and Patrick Norton is here to tell us how to avoid wasting money on GPUs. You need that money. Waste it. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, March 8th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. At the edge of the 314, I'm Patrick Norton. Drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. I'd also like to tell everyone to pre-order my book. Thank you for mentioning it on yesterday's show, Sarah. I appreciate that. Well, you're very welcome. I, I, I want told people you to, to, it, but... <laughs> to read your stuff because you're a smart yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't hear yesterday, I've got a book coming out about technology called Synced. And if you go to tomsnewbook.com, you can pre-order it. Please do find out more about it there. If you like my perspective on technology on this show, you just have more of it within arm's reach on a bookshelf near you. All right, let's start with the quick hits. In a blog post posted on Friday, Microsoft said that attackers gained access to some of its source code repositories and internal systems in what the company describes as an ongoing attack first detected in January. It's not clear what source code was accessed, but Microsoft warns that the attackers are using secrets of different types it has found to try to further breach the company and potentially its customers. Microsoft is working with affected customers to mitigate the attacks. Thursday, we talked about the bipartisan effort to pass a law in the United States that would require ByteDance to sell the U.S. arm of TikTok or have it effectively banned in the country. Uh, president Trump signed an executive order along similar lines during his term as president, which is why it's possibly surprising to some people that he indicated support for TikTok and opposition to the ban. Uh, to be very clear, he didn't say either of those explicitly. What he did say was that if you got rid of TikTok, it would benefit Facebook. And he doesn't like Facebook and doesn't want Facebook to do better. Uh, TikTok has also been flexing its muscles a bit, sending a notice to U.S. users Thursday asking them to call their congressional representatives. And apparently a lot of them did. Phones have been ringing. Vision OS 1.1 for the Apple Vision Pro is now out for everybody and adds the multiple device management option enterprises that have uh, that some enterprises rather have wanted, including enterprise support for email, contacts and calendars. Apple has also improved personas. Some people like them. Many people didn't. The beta feature that creates a digital version of yourself for use during video calls. So you don't have to hold it in your hands anymore when you set it up. And also the avatars should look better. Apple changed its mind, I guess. Uh, I guess it's convinced that Epic has changed its way and will play by the rules. Uh, Epic Games wrote on a blog post, Apple has told us and committed to the European Commission that they will reinstate our developer account. The Euro Com European Commission had said it was going to investigate Apple's decision to revoke the developer account of Epic Sweden uh, and see if it violated any provisions of either the Digital Markets Act or the Digital Services Act. If you recall, Apple had revoked Epic's developer account in 2020 after Epic admitted it broke the rules on purpose. Apple briefly approved a developer account for Epic Sweden earlier this week, but then asked Epic to give assurances it wouldn't break the rules again. And then Apple found Epic's short response insufficient and revoked the account. But after the EC said it would investigate, Apple has changed its mind without commenting as to why, leaving us all to assume that they believe Epic. After all, those two should get a room. <laughs> Reddit launched more business tools to help companies make better use of Reddit and, who knows, maybe pay for more ads. Among the tools a Reddit Pro users gets is trending topics relevant to the brand, mentions on subreddits, and publishing tools for creating drafts and scheduling posts as well. Then there's the stuff that you might expect, like analytics. You can also turn posts into advertisements, if you so desire. More than 200 businesses have started using Reddit Pro as of this recording. All right. Ah, I'm getting ready for a trip, Sarah. You are getting ready for a trip, Tom. And I know tacos will be part of it, but uh, you are headed to Austin, Texas for Brian Brushwood's event during a very interesting time, a solar uh, eclipse. And in fact, a total solar eclipse. Now, uh, there is some power stuff that might be affected while you're there. Tell us about that. Yes, it is an eclipse of more than just my heart, uh, visible in the U.S. from <laughs> Texas. 
uh, all the way up to Maine in the northeast part of the country. USC professor of physics and astronomy Vahe Perumian wrote an article for The Conversation about how the advances in solar power in the U.S. mean that power grids are going to have to take unprecedented steps in order to stop the eclipse from causing blackouts. Okay, so this is not the first eclipse. Many of us as kids remember, you know, wearing the eclipse glasses, looking up at the sun, be careful, super fun. Why is it a bigger problem this time? Uh, because the U.S. has three times the capacity for solar energy generation now than it did the last time there was a total solar eclipse in 2017. Uh, in Texas, the eclipse is going to last a little less than three hours uh, it's only four and a half minutes or so of total darkness, uh, but, you know, it's blocking out the sun for a good long time, which stops solar power from working, just like it does at night. Uh, it's not just solar it affects either. The lack of light reduces heat, reducing the temperature, which causes the winds to die down. So that has an effect on wind power as well. OK, so you say, all right, three hours of darkness, solar power, got it. But. Isn't solar already affected by something like a cloudy day or, mm -hmm. you know, everything after sundown? We know the eclipse is coming. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, can, can we not mitigate this, uh, the, the, the issue yeah. ahead of time? It's not like the eclipse lurks behind the moon and just like pops out. <laughs> like, ha, no, you no, didn't know. It like yeah. total eclipse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, no, we and, and we actually have pretty good models for anticipating cloudy days uh, and and dealing with those as well. There are battery banks out there. Uh, in larger numbers, helping even out the variables. But cloudy is not the same as darkness. Uh, a total eclipse is more like night falling for a few hours, and it happens faster than sunset. Uh, it gets darker than cloud cover. So even though we know it's coming, it's going to cause a different kind of strain on the grid. Okay, so we know it's coming. People uh, who uh, understand what's going on are warning others. What is actually happening to prevent... A real issue. Yeah, uh, to to make sure that there isn't a problem, and there probably will not be. That we're not we're not trying to spread fear here. Uh, but I thought it was curious that the grid operators had to prepare for this, so they're readying local reserves. Uh, especially if they have battery banks uh, or unaffected sources like natural gas plants, coal plants, stuff like that, making sure that they've got enough in reserve uh, to crank those up. Uh, they're also limiting power transfers between grids so that another grid doesn't start pulling a bunch of power out of a grid that needs it. That'll reduce tr strain on the transmission lines. Uh, and and all of that should, should prevent there from being any problem. It's not like there was going to be a huge problem, but if they hadn't done anything, <laughs> there could have been a problem. So it's yeah. good to know that they're thinking of it ahead of time. Right, Patrick? I think it's better to prepare and not have issues than be like, whatever, and then have something terrible happen. I, it's, it's funny, right? Because, you know, I'll be driving down to Carbondale, Illinois, or somewhere around there to see the, the – I want totality because it's an extraordinary experience. It's like seeing the Grand Canyon, but better. Um, but it's like – at least it's – I feel like it's running through a path where – it's not going to do as much trouble as it could in other paths across the United States. That said, I know people down in Texas that use solar and are probably, you know, looking up and wondering if their battery power is going to last them. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see what the, the after report is like in terms of how it impacts things. Uh, yeah, I mean, the more I think about it, you know, the more I'm like, well, I don't have solar panels on my roof, but let's say I did. It's like, I don't know, maybe... My energy consumption that month might be a little wonky later when I get my bill. But, you know, what if you're a hospital or, you know, you know, in, in, you know, some sort of, you know, municipal situation where uh, a lot of people would be affected by systems going down, even for a brief period of time. There are probably situations that we're going to hear about after the fact where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, that, you know, they should have prepared better because that's how these things go. But otherwise, it, it surprises me that something that is pretty quick, I mean, just several hours uh, could potentially be such a big deal. Yeah, the, the speed of it is part of the problem, right? When the eclipse happens, it, it, it the total eclipse blocks out the sun real fast. Uh, yeah. And, and it's 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 not like the sun slowly going down with the long twilight. And totality in this one's a fairly long event. It's like four minutes, which yeah, four twenty seven, I think. Yeah, yeah, which is huge. I mean, I'm I'm actually the thing I'm really curious about is how many people 
just have no idea it's coming and are going to just <laughs> freak out when it happens. Well, given the fact that you cannot rent a car in Austin on April 8th, the day of the eclipse, uh, tells me that there, there's a lot of people do know it's coming and hopefully they'll tell yeah. the other people. But yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I was uh, I, I wasn't totally aware of this until I saw a Facebook post. I was telling the guys before the show, a friend of mine was going to fly to, I think it was Austin. It was somewhere in Texas. And she just had to give up her plane tickets. She couldn't go. And I mean, people jumped on that in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Oh my gosh. It was like, we want the tickets. We want to uh, go. Yeah. yeah. Cause it, cause it's, it's hard to get there. I think because there was just by. one in 2017, there's a lot of people who are like, that was so cool. I want to do it again. And a lot of people yeah. who heard from the people who, who were there, like that was so cool. And now I want to, I want to try it. So, but it's also it, to me, the, the significance of the story is not that we're worried there's going to be a problem. It's that, Solar power has reached a large enough percentage of power generation in the United States that they have to think about it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not little, just that tree hugging. A little blip in the radar, children. actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it affects a lot of folks. And it's well, also, um, so accessible. Oops, sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry, Patrick. Just laugh because comedy <laughs> is having a renaissance. But... Not necessarily just because people are funnier, although that would be cool too. Variety is reporting that between Netflix specials, COVID streaming numbers that, you know, peaked for a lot of folks and social media in general have all been boons to modern comedians. Modern comedians who formerly relied on things like comedy clubs and late night stuff, maybe a sitcom gig, maybe an occasional special on HBO if you were big or lucky enough to have something like that to build their names. Today, comedians have other options to get the jokes out, so to speak. Um, uh, Variety notes that in 2016, Just for Laughs executive Robbie Pra joined Netflix as VP of stand-up and comedy formats. You might have noticed around that time, you started to see a lot of comedy specials on Netflix that gave performance uh, performers potentially seven-figure deals that they might not have gotten otherwise to make Netflix specials and turn the comedy landscape into a seller's market and help make comedians Ellie Wong, for example, household names. She does good Netflix specials. Um, there, are, there are other indications of this. Independent artist media partner Dave Rath says that Netflix created an imbalance in the marketplace because before that, you had Comedy Central, you had HBO, a few other places doing those long form specials, but not paying the kind of money that comedians can get now. And then, of course, as I mentioned, COVID, you've got, you know, in-person restaurants that weren't a thing, bars, not a thing, comedy clubs, not a thing. <laughs> Where are you going to get your laughs? Well, you turn to the Internet. You've got YouTube channels now. You've got TikTok. You've got Instagram. Comedians have podcasts or or appear on other podcasts. Uh, not that they didn't before, but they are in in larger numbers. I don't know. I I I, uh, I I'm cool with this. I don't love every comedian in the world, but boy, do I like a good stand up special. Yeah, I think this is really interesting in the sense that it didn't replace a lot of the like, ah, the, the new streaming world is replacing cable. We're watching it happen slowly. <laughs> uh, in this particular instance, it's not that it did that. Uh, it's that it enhanced. It said we are going to give more comedians a path to getting those specials and the specials won't just be HBO specials available to a limited few. There'll be Netflix specials and there are others out there, Paramount Plus, uh, HBO Max or, or just Max as it is now. Uh, so I like this. And in fact, I have a, a cousin uh, who does stand up and he, I consume most of his humor through Instagram. Like that's where I see it. And he's mm -hmm. hilarious and it does work. And like, he's like, yeah, I, I get most of the people coming out to my shows saying, I saw you on Instagram, maybe on TikTok and elsewhere, but it's, it's his entire livelihood. Uh, and it's done in an entirely different way than he would have had to do it 10, 15 years ago. Well, and to go to a comedy club, I mean, that's super fun, but you know, so it's often late at night, you know, you m might have to, you know, be over the age of 21 because it's in a bar type thing. Maybe it's, you know, only in certain cities. Are you going to see the comedian you really want to see? So it's limited, but uh, the Internet is not. And the idea that it's driving more folks to get audiences that, you know, really think that the, this comedian deserves uh, their own special. And then those comedians getting the specials getting more eyeballs, getting more laughs, getting paid. Um, it, it just seems like, it seems like a better, 
a, a better time than ever to to try your hand at it. So, Patrick, get on up on that stage and <laughs> give us your best. Nope, I am a little late to start stand up. Uh, I will say, like, I, there's a couple of comedians like Taylor Tomlinson I discovered through Netflix. But I think one of the big things about this is they're actually making real money. Uh, and I hate to say real in quotes, but it's like more than I'll make in the next 10 years they're making for a special. But the fact that they're actually creating a bidding war, because there used to be some pretty limited outlets and people so wanted to be on that outlet, they were willing to, you know, do it for the exposure. So now to see people actually making considerable amounts of cash off these and getting the boost that gets them in the live appearances. It just seems nice. Yeah. And it's driven, driven more festivals because people are more aware Mm -hmm. and more interested. So you see, you know, Netflix doing 200 venues, New York film comedy festival, 250 venues. Like, you know, it's not that there weren't comedy festivals before, but they are more popular now because more people are into more comedians. Yeah. South by Southwest, which, you know, was, was, well, not, it was never dead, but, you know, it wasn't a thing again a couple of years ago because no live events uh, and festivals were a thing. has a big comedy lineup coming up um, for for the folks that are going to be joining that festival this year. And, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's a it's a it's a renaissance of of sorts uh, for comedians. And, and yeah, it, it just it, it's it's a genre that has benefited uh, well, from the fact that <laughs> we were all struggling, a yeah. bit, you it's, know, it's an unusual side effect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, to think like it actually caused more people to be interested, more people to make a livelihood, and not just on the internet. It, it caused people to go out in <laughs> real life uh, and and go see more comedy. So yeah. that's cool. Uh, well, folks, when you're not buying my new book on pre-order at tomsnewbook.com, uh, you can also watch Tom's Top 5, the show where I break down five things you need to know about technology in about 60 seconds. Uh, and this week was so much fun. Uh, with everybody making their predictions and their reviews about the Apple Vision Pro, we looked back at what people got wrong about the iPhone when it first came out in 2007. So go go check out some of the hilariously wrong predictions, hilariously wrong reviews, uh, sometimes right but for the wrong reasons, at our top five. You can find it at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, DTNS Picks on Instagram, and of course at YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. If you don't want to worry about buying and maintaining hardware, you might like NVIDIA's GeForce Now streaming service more than ever. GeForce Now added day passes that lets free players try out advanced features without having to pay the $10 to $20 for a whole month. So $3.99 gets you uh, trying the priority tier, $7.99 to try the ultimate tier. And if you do have the ultimate tier, you can now take advantage of G-Sync if your monitor supports variable refresh rates. Windows users will need to be running on an NVIDIA GTX 1650 or newer. So you might as well just say, why not buy a GPU at this point? Uh, If you do (laughs) want to mess with the hardware and buy a GPU, Patrick has been keeping us up to date for years on GPU price trends, what to look for to get the best deal. Uh, And Patrick, it sounds like prices have been edging up a little bit again. What's going on? Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, first of all, the GPUs are flowing as in, gosh darn, I remember when this whole aisle of Micro Center was glass doors with nothing behind them. And now there's, <laughs> like, there's, there's a huge section of GPUs, NVIDIA and AMD, and then there's an aisle, and then there's more GPUs. These are the ones that nobody buys except for like servers or mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it's, it's, uh, I'm, still, I'm still adapting to the new reality of being able to buy a GPU somewhere near MSRP. MSRP is not a fantasy. Um, it was for a long time. As you get into the most expensive cards, though, MSRP is gone again, at least by a couple of hundred bucks, which sounds outrageous on, say, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar card. But compared to the bad times when the GPUs were scarce, <laughs> it's not so bad at all. So and, when you say MSRP is gone, in other words, you can't find some of these GPUs at the price they're listed at. You're going to have to pay a little more. So if you're looking at a like a 4070 Super, an NVIDIA RTX card, great for 1440p, uh, MSRP on that is $599. They're selling anywhere from like $599 to $700. Get into a 4080 Super, they're selling closer to uh, you know 1050, 1100, 1250 MSRP, and those is a thousand. And the really tough one is when you're looking at like the 4090s. Um, 
I want to say the 4090, the MSRP is $1,599, and those are selling for 1800 to 2000 so two to 400 So, you know, at $400 over MSRP, that's a, that's a 25% bump over MSRP. Um, yeah, that's, that's steep, but not as steep yeah. as it has been. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's, you know, and it's not like I need a 4090 anyway, but, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's interesting, right? When you when you look at the Steam hardware survey, most folks still game at 1080p, right? Um, 1920 by 1080, 1080p, 58.82% of people on Steam. 1440p, uh, 2560 by 1440, that's another 19%. Um, and then when you get into, uh, let's see, the dreaded WXGA, which I think of as a miserable laptop screen, that's like 3.56%, uh, 2560 by 1660, which is the wide uh, WXGA, it's like 3.14%, 4K is 3.45%, um, you know, 21 by 9, 3440 by 1440, my personal desktop monitor, which I wish was faster than 60 frames per second, uh, that's like 2.13%. So 78% of gamers are 1080p, 1440p, and Add in uh, WX, WQXGA, and you're up at like 81%. And 6K in all its flavors is still under, well under 6%. So that means you don't necessarily need a high end GPU. Um, and if you're building 1080p, you can actually build a relatively inexpensive machine. You know, bargain build entry level 1080p Radeon RX 6600, I think it's going to be like $200. Um, Stepping up to better 1080p performance, uh, Radeon RX 7600, those are between 270 and 290, GeForce RTX 4060s that are somewhere between 290 and $390. The other thing is, like, I've been fascinated by, as GPUs are available in, like, more than one in that store over there that's surrounded by angry people, um... It's been funny to watch all of the, you know, they're overclocked, they're super cooled, we have nine fans, they're water cooled. So you're watching some pretty significant deltas on the price, depending on how fancy it is. I'm just looking for the longer warranty, which should mean better components and longevity. Uh, but if you want to spend money on a GPU, the industry is ready for you. <laughs> they will take your money. <laughs> They, they will take your money. Uh, 4070 Super, which is a great 1440p car. It's got better ray tracing. Um, that's when you're starting to get into okay space for 4K, not great. That's six to $700 on an MSRP of 599 um, 10% bump, I think, for a 4070 Ti Super. Then you're around $800 to you know, nine hundred dollars. Forty eight or super, forty eighty super, uh NVIDIA RTX forty eighty super, uh pretty serious fourteen forty P performance, better four K performance, then you're in that thousand dollar range. But for most of us, I think we're gonna be pretty happy, uh, you know, unless you're unless you're going to spend significant money uh with a forty sixty. Uh and if you want to spend more money, you can get pretty serious gaming performance for well under a thousand dollars, which yeah. is not what you could do. For oh so many years during the How, ages of gaming. The, the question, I, I know a lot of people are like, no, but I want 4K, even if I don't need it. Uh, the, the more rational question is, how future-proof am I? at these different price points. Like if I have well, to spend $600 now so I don't have to replace it in two years, is that worth it? Well, let me ask you a question, Thomas. Mm -hmm. What's the last time you replaced your desktop gaming monitor? Oh, I'm a horrible person. Uh, I never <laughs> replace it. But but yeah. Let's 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 not let's not judge here. Let's say yeah. I like to maximize it's been a the while. value of my investment. <laughs> I've gotten yeah, yeah, several yeah. years, right? But most people, you know, maybe actually looking at the Steam numbers, it's obviously it's a most great people. point. Yeah. But most people change their monitor. Never, every yeah, five right. Years, and if, and right? if you're upgrading, if you're upgrading your your GPU without changing your monitor, you're not taking advantage of the GPU. So there's, well, there's, yeah. we could argue, and I, you know, my my elder teen is not obsessed with frame rates yet because a lot of the gaming he's doing is not super gotcha. Twitch gaming. But you know, I know people who are like, I want 400 frames per second. I run my games at 720p for superior response, and it's like not my world, but it's out there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of cases, though, most people are probably getting, if you're not a graphics artist, if you're not obsessed with color fidelity, uh, you know, uh, if you're not obsessed with upping your frame rates on your monitor, I think most people are sitting on their monitors for at least one or two PC builds, if not yeah. more. So I feel that unless, you know, until your games you like to play start to slow down, your GPU is fast enough. 
Um, you know, I would say level up if you can when you're buying a new GPU, but, you know, I, I that may be hopefulness off my part. I'm shocked at how many games are basically uh-huh. designed to run on machines six years ago that yeah. a huge number of people are still playing today, so... Do with that as you will. You can you can you can get a lot more mileage out of it than maybe yeah. you, you expect. All right, let's check out the mailbag. This one comes in from Eric, who says, "I've been a listener of the DTNS podcast MP3 downloads from your DTNS.com web page for many years, DailyTechNewsShow.com. Back to the Buzz Out Loud days. I visited Patreon.com looking for that ad-free version, but after signing up for a trial membership, I didn't find a way to download the short version of the podcast." I don't want the longer GDI podcast. I don't want to have to use an iOS app on my phone. I just want a way to get a membership and be able to download that same MP3 that you have on your website, but without those ads. Is there a way to do this? Thank you for your help. Uh, yes, and I, I've already uh, emailed Eric directly back, uh, but there is a way. I know that the, what, what we do with Good Day Internet and what we do with the Patreon is is say, look, uh, if you're supporting us, we're not only going to give you an ad-free version, we're going to give you more. Uh, and and m- for most people, that's a good thing. They're like, hey, I, I like the show enough. Giving me more show is, is a great thing. And if I run out of time, I just skip it, but it's fine. Give me more show. And our what we've been trying to do, and I think we're doing it well, is that more show is also full of substance, right? It's fun. It's a little more laid back, but there's a lot of value in it. I also understand that there are people like Eric who are like, I just want the 30 minutes. Can I get that ad free? And we do have an option for people like that, uh, that you may not be aware of. Go to adfreedtns.com and it takes you to ACAST Plus. ACAST Plus gives you the exact same feed you get in public with ads, except without the ads. So you pay $3 a month, you get no ads, you get an RSS feed just like you would uh, otherwise, and you can download everything as you would. So go check that out, adfreedtns.com. Meanwhile, Len Peralta has been drawing today's show. Which topic did you draw this time, Len? You know, um, getting back to Eclipse Talk, uh, the path of totality actually comes right through Cleveland. Uh, Avon Lake is going to be having like a million people. Uh, so I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't show up. Uh, you're not showing up to Cleveland to. Oh, to you now, to now I regret it. Yeah, that's all right. Up to Southern Illinois, either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's but, his birthplace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why aren't you going there? Um, but uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be cloudy or anything else that's mm. going to affect the solar energy. Um, so that's what this is sort of about. Uh, my friends over in Avon Lake saying, oh, it's cold <laughs> and dark in Cleveland. The end. Ah, oh, wait a minute. That's yeah, cloudy, dark. It's cold. It's that's that's just Cleveland, man. So uh, <laughs> they're just like, oh, it's the same as any day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you uh, I wish you uh, could come out here and spend some time, but it's going to be uh, you're going to be able to have a great vantage point from where you're at. Yeah, Brian's been planning this. Like he actually founded his business on April 8th with the idea of being able to celebrate its five year anniversary on the eclipse. <laughs> like I was, I was about planning, calling your shot. I was planning my uh, nice. my eclipse stuff during the 2017 one. So sure, uh, if you you know it's so funny because I was actually at a store last night and they had eclipse T-shirts there. Uh, so, uh, if, but if you want to celebrate this in your own way, uh, you can go to my online store, lenperaltastore.com and you can get this, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, and you can, uh, and you get it right if you back me at the DTNS lover level. So, uh, happy eclipse, everybody, and, uh, and hopefully, uh, those in the path of totality will, uh, will be, will have a great view and no clouds and no solar stopping either. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Patrick Norton, always good to have you. Let folks know where they can keep up with what you do in between appearances on DTNS. Well, I'm ramping up my appearances on uh, X and other alternate Twitter-like platforms. But really, though, what I'm thinking about right now, Tom, is it true that your new book synced at, well, you know, the website? <laughs> is that really about understanding technology and making it work for you? I'm, instead of I'm, I'm glad you asked, Patrick. Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate that. Tom's new book.com. 
at Patrick Norton. <laughs> uh, and Patrick will talk about it on his Twitter as well. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show Good Day Internet. It's Friday quiz time. Get ready, movie buffs. We're going to recall which movies debuted groundbreaking computer-generated animation technologies. Play along with us and learn something on Good Day Internet. Patrons, stick around. A reminder, you can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back on Monday discussing the explosion in handheld Steam Deck-like machines with Shannon Morse joining us. Have a great weekend. We just mean popularity. They're not exploding. Yeah. <laughs> This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Dutterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, Delius Goddess One. BioCal, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama. Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows include Nika Monford, Chris Christensen, Scott Johnson, Justin Robert Young, and Patrick Norton. And thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand.